Good morning, dear students. Today, inshallah, we will talk about lesson one, unit two, universal forces in nature. Firstly, we should know what is the meaning of the word force. To know the meaning of the word force, I'll ask you three questions to know this definition. First one, if you have your book on your desk, this book is in a state of rest or a state of motion? Of course, it's in a state of rest. Can it move by itself? Of course not. But if you make an effect on it, it will be transported here. Your effect will change the state of book from rest to motion. Okay, next one. Here, if you are running, if you are playing, and one of your friends tries to stop you, here, your friend will make an effect on you to change your state huh, from, excellent, from a state of motion to state of rest. Okay, the third and the last one. If a ball is moving backward, if you are playing football and the ball is moving backward and you want to push it forward, here you will make an effect on the ball. Here your effect will change the ball direction. From these three cases, we can say the definition of the force, it is the effect. Force is the effect that attempts, means, tries to change the object's state from rest to motion or from motion to rest, meaning vice versa, or to change its direction. Okay, here I have three give reasons which are very simple and easy. Number one, give reason. A book in the table remains static, means it doesn't move. Why? Of course, because there is no effect on it, because there is no force affects on it. Okay, the second one. If you left any weight, anything by your hand, it will transport it to another place. Why? Give reason. Because it's affected by a force. But here, if this force is enough, is suitable, here the object will be easily transported with you. But so, sorry, so here if the force is suitable, the force is enough, meaning proper force, so the object will be transmitted or transported with you. So if I ask you, give reason, when you lift a weight or any object by your hand, it transports to another place, give reason, because it's affected by proper force. Know this word very well, proper force. But the opposite, have you ever tried to push the wall when you make force on the wall it doesn't move although you make force on it but my force to push the wall isn't enough isn't suitable which is called improper false force so when i ask you give reason when you push a wall by your hand it doesn't move give reason because it's affected by improper force improper is the opposite of proper force here, I will move to another point in our lesson. Around us, there are many different phenomena which are forms of energy, but we see this energy in the form of different phenomena, as I said, as lightning, thunder, wind direction, and the attraction force of the Earth. All these phenomena are belonging to three main types of forces, which are attraction force, electromagnetic forces and finally nuclear forces in our lesson we will talk about each of one in details firstly i'll talk about the attraction force in the past there was a scientist who was called Isaac Newton, who was the first scientist who discovered the gravity or gravitational force of the earth how he was sitting under a tree of apple while he was sitting, an apple fell down on, hi on him. Here, he started to think why this apple is 
falling down, not falling up to, or moving up to the sky, why it doesn't move left or right. From here, he discovered the gravitational force of the Earth or the attraction force of the Earth. Here, we will call this gravitational force of the Earth, which is the weight of the object. Here we have the definition of the object's weight, which is, it is the force that attracts objects to the center of the Earth. And related to the name of this scientist is Huck Newton. Here they choose Newton to be the measuring unit of the weight. Again, what's meant by weight, weight is the force that attracts objects to the center of the Earth or the gravitational force of the Earth that attracts objects, okay? And its measuring unit is Newton. As we knew before from the first term and from grade uh, six, we have the weight equals mass times the gravity acceleration. And from the magic triangle also, we knew before, here from the magic triangle we can get the weight equals the mass times the gravity acceleration. If we want to calculate the mass, the mass equals the weight over gravity acceleration. If you want to calculate the gravity, you divide weight over the mass. Here I have two problems, which are very easy. Number one, find the weight, so you are asked to calculate the weight, and you are giving the mass of the object, which is 100 kilogram, and the Earth's gravitational force is 9.8 meter per second square. Here, the weight equals mass times uh, gravitational acceleration, which is equal 100 times 9.8 equal 980 Newton. Don't forget to write the measuring unit. In science problems, don't forget to put the rule and put the measuring unit. Okay, the second one, here we have another problem. Here you are asked to calculate the mass and you are given the weight of the object equals 280 Newton and the gravitational force, or sorry, the gravitational gravity acceleration equals 10 meter per second square. Here, from this rule or from the magic triangle, we have mass equals weight over gravity acceleration, which is equal 280 over 10, which is equal 28 kilogram. Don't forget that the measuring unit of the mass is kilogram as uh, we said before. Here, from this rule, we can know the factors affecting on the weight. We said before that the weight equal mass times gravitational force. So the factors affecting the weight are number one, mass, number two, gravity acceleration. Number one in mass, by increasing the mass, the, ob the weight, increases. By increasing the mass of the object, the weight increases. Number two, gravity acceleration by being nearer to the center of the Earth, as you see here in this picture, the weight increases. Okay, so from these two points, we can see that the mass is a constant value, but the gravity, sorry, or the weight is variable value. Remember, mass is the amount of matter in an object. It's a constant value, as I said, and its unit is kilogram or gram. Here in our problems, we will deal with unit of the mass in kilograms. As you see here, we hear three cases from being far from the Earth and being nearer, here you see the mass is constant in the three states, but the weight is variable. As I said before, that by being nearer to the center of the Earth, the weight increases due to increasing the gravitational acceleration. Okay? Very important rule and very important definition. 
Any object has a point in its center. This point is the most effective one due to the gravitational force of the Earth. This point is called the center of gravity of an object. Again, the center of gravity of an object. It's a point in the center of the object, which is called the object's effective point. Now, I have finished talking about the first type of forces, which is the attraction force. Now we talk about the second one, which is the electromagnetic force. Electromagnetic force. There are many different devices around us depend on electromagnetic forces to work. Here we will talk about three of them. Number one, which is called electromagnet. Electromagnet. Electromagnet is a device that's made up of three parts and its components is very important to we will be known. Number one, wrought iron. Wrought iron means soft iron or an iron nail, copper wire, and a battery. This electromagnet or this device changes from electric energy into magnetic energy. Electric into magnetic. From its name, electro, from electric. Magnet from magnetic, okay? So, electromagnet changes from electric energy into magnetic energy. This electromagnet is used in making different devices as the electric quench. As you see here in this picture, these electric quenches are used in factories in different uses to left heavy iron blocks. Okay, number two, used also in making electric bills. So again, it's very important to know the importance of electromagnet. It changes from electric energy into magnetic energy. The second one, which is the electric generator, which is known as dynamo. As this picture, I think most of you see this picture before, which is the electric generator. This electric generator converts or it changes from mechanical energy which is kinetic energy into electric energy mechanical into electric so it's used to generate electricity from its name electric generator okay number three and the last device electric motor this electric motor which is found in many different machines at our homes which is converts from electric energy into mechanical energy it converts again from electric into mechanical as the motor in fan mixer and washing machines when you turn on the fan here you give it huh, electric energy excellent now once you connect it with the electricity it starts to move which is mechanical energy or kinetic energy so the motor changes from electric into mechanical excellent the same mixer and the washing machine okay here i have finished talking about the second type of forces which is the electromagnetic force here i have the third and the last type of forces we will talk in our lesson, which is the nuclear force. Do you remember the word in nuclear? Remember you with the word excellent nucleus. Do you remember in the first unit when we talked about the atom structure, we said that in the center of the atom there is a small part which is called nucleus. Do you do you think Dear students, see that this very small nucleus that can't be seen by our eyes, it stores massive, huge amount of energy inside this nucleus. This massive energy is accompanied with nuclear forces. These nuclear forces are of two types. These types are number one, or maybe weak nuclear force or strong nuclear force. Again, the nuclear forces, the word the nuclear, come from, yes, excellent nucleus. This nucleus, very small, tiny part inside the atom, it stores a huge or a massive amount of energy. This energy 
accompanied with the two types of forces which are called the nuclear forces these nuclear forces may be weak nuclear force or strong nuclear force of course both of them have importance as what number one weak nuclear force which is used in medicine industry and scientific research okay again the nuclear forces are used in different uses as medicine industry and the scientific research number two and the last one here is the strong nuclear force this is strong nuclear force mainly used in generating electricity mainly used in generating electricity and in the different military uses here we have finished our lesson lesson one unit two thank you and don't forget to answer sheet four in the booklet and see you soon thank you